every company operates in like a different like model, right? For example, like Zara. Zara, huge company. It takes Zara like on average like two weeks from drawing to floor, mm. which is super fast. So all they do is focus on R&D, trend, they push it, and they, and they pop it out, as opposed to like Uniqlo, which takes them like a year. But they own the entire process. They own that mill. They own that cotton field. Like they, they, that ship's my ship. It's a completely different model, and it's a completely different kind of business style, and their products are different, but that's how they operate. All right, today we have a very unique guest. He's not from the real estate industry, but he's got a hell of a story to tell. Uh, Dan Park operates as the executive vice president of Zeos, which is a clothing brand company. They have 20 locations across the U.S. And for, the, for those that don't know, I believe my stepdad actually worked at this company at one point selling, but... Um, but the quality of the of the clothing is so good and it is at an incredible price point. And so this, this is a unique business model that Dan's father had initially founded. And now Dan is, is taking over and, and currently operating the business. But Dan, thank you so much for taking the time today to come on the show. How are you doing? Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. And I'm very honored and humbled. And transitioning from one completely different career to another has been a crazy and wild experience. I still feel like I have a ton of knowledge I need to, to learn and experience. The last two years have been very, very full. <laughs> I can uh, imagine. So to speak. So I'll give a, a quick background maybe. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Please. I was in the NYPD for 15 years. I've worked in several boroughs. I am very open-minded and open-voiced. Against you know that's not okay for the NYPD. You have to be quiet. I really just say yes, sir. And I'm like, I'm not good at that. All right. But um, my father approached me and he says, "Listen, I need you." And you know, as a Korean, when your father says that, it's like, okay, you got it. You say you need me, I'm coming. Right. And some people are like, are you sure? This is a big transition of careers. What about like what makes you happy? What do you want to do? And I was like, listen, my dad needs me. Right. What are you talking about? <laughs> like mm. he says, Nothing he says, else come. Matters. You know, this is for the family and also, of course, the employees. He has a very, he has a very big focus on being fair. His reputation is he's tough as far as like negotiating is concerned, but once his promises are made, and once like you see his goal in mind, his view is, if we make a deal, you make a little bit of money, I make a little bit of money, and we play the long game. Like mm. That's that's his style, mm. and I'm trying very hard to emulate like his his ethos. So it's been uh, it's it's been amazing to finally spend more time with him. I mean, he's a very busy man. I could imagine. You know, and he's been a machine for the past forty years. And when he walks into a room, and when he goes into like, let's say we go to Las Vegas for the magic show for sourcing, people come out of their booth to like shake his hand. Wow. Uh, I've I've learned that the sourcing for most clothing companies now they don't operate in this way. Direct relationships with the with the factory owners having long-standing relationships, trying to help each other out when there's, when there's issues, right? The reason why my father's reputation is so good, despite being more of a, of a mid-sized company, is that people know, oh, Mr. Park, he would rather, like, die than not pay. <laughs> <laughs> he will pay. Yeah. You know, he will maintain his promise. He will keep his word. So in this industry, it's very common. Uh, I won't mention, like, certain brands, but certain very powerful, very large brands, they'll place orders maybe a couple of million dollars. This is for the spring collection or the summer. And then, as you know, fashion is very quick. Maybe colors change, fabrics change. And they're like, you know what? In like three weeks, they'll say, they'll call them back because they make that half. Mm. And that means you eat the difference, which means now you're out of business and your factory's done, right? So there are certain brands that are not allowed in certain countries because of this horrible practice. And they're like, you know what? I'm big enough. I don't need to go to China. I can go to India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, right. Vietnam, Morocco, Egypt, whatever. You know, and it's not right. And my father's there. My father has been the kind of guy where he'll call one of the factories. Hey, this product that you made, fantastic! My quarter's been rocking. How are you? He's like, well, Mr. Park, it's it's not good. I'm like, what do you mean? And he tells him what happened. He goes, Oh my God, why didn't you call me? Oh, why are you the money? 
like you and me we're old dogs and we can't just give up <laughs> like wow we, we're gonna maintain this business but you have to call me when you're in trouble and we'll make a deal we'll figure it out there's no need for this what a guy yeah and i'm like dad that's like, how do you make deals with these guys because it's scary you can't put a deposit you, you're gonna give a deposit to some guy you've never met before in, in like bangladesh he'll just take your money mm. you know you have to you have to try to like build a rapport right and most companies, what they'll do, more modern companies, they'll build, they'll open up a line of credit with a local bank. You guys make your deal, whether it's like FOB, DDP, stuff like that, with shipping. And with my father, the factories that know him, they don't even go through that process. They'll be like, oh, Mr. Park needs an order? Make it. Wow. And I'm like, what about the contracts? It's him. Yeah. For 30 years, this guy's been like on time. And he would, he would never like break his word. Not pay. So chances are, in the very near foreseeable future, it'll be me flying to these countries. Mm. I'm like, hi, I'm the sun. And this is a very big difference between like Western and like Eastern business. Mm. So in Western business, if there's two companies working together, let's say the buyer changes or whatever, business c- resumes as usual, business as usual. But with like Asian cultures, it's like, all right, I'm the new buyer. We have to make a new relationship. Who are you? I need to know who you, I need to know how you operate. I need to know what you like to eat. Like, let's, let's see how you hang out. And that's the, they're going to be observing me with, like, a magnifying glass. <laughs> I'm going to be like, hi, how are you? <laughs> like, like, I'm here as a representative, and I'm going to maintain the good reputation that we have. That's wow. amazing. Wow. I, I feel there's a lot of directions you could take this, but, I mean, for me, I think um, a, lot of our, a lot of our listeners, they're either aspiring entrepreneurs or they're getting started or maybe they have a small business. Um and I think there's a lesson to be learned in you're, you're coming into an already successful business, um, probably going through a lot of the bumps in the road that a, a new entrepreneur would make, um, but also trying to implement, you know, new practices, maybe uh, up to date, you know, social media, whatever that is. Talk me through that transition from NYPD, right, to where you are today and, and kind of some of the challenges you face. In the NYPD, despite how good your work ethic may be or your results. Like in my unit, I was number one. Mm. But that doesn't mean anything because am I best friends with you? <laughs> like, Or do you like this guy better? Politics. Or does this person have a, 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 an aunt who you know? Like, you know, oh. And then YPD, that's a very, very common thing. Mm. right? If you just scrape by and who knows who and whatever, fine. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are units that are merit-based. Thank God. Like we need them. But for the most part, I just didn't matter what I thought. I just did the best I could and I was trying to help the general public in any, any investigation I had. And then in this job, people are looking to me to make decisions or looking to me to learn their division, their department well enough that I can make inf- informed decisions that will take the company in a, in, a, in a positive new direction. And the first thing I've noticed is yes, the products are amazing. No one in the world makes this quality product at this price point. My father has no competitors. COVID was probably like record breaking for us. And like, you know, all these other companies went under. And when you have kind of like, I guess, not the best intentions in your in your business practices, COVID revealed that and then they all just went under, right? And my father, he survived it. And of course, what's also cool about him is when he first started in like clothing and textiles, there was like over 500 Korean businesses in the tri-state area. And now it's just him. So, you know, like, wow, I'm impressed by him. I'm like, wow, dad, you're like, you're the hero. That's, like, that's <laughs> incredible. Can you tell me about, well, I'm guessing your dad's Christian. Yes. Yeah. That Those, those fundamentals, just, just making sure you always pay when you owe someone money, right? Having integrity with your word. I mean, those are, that's just Proverbs. <laughs> that's the wisdom that you get right from the Bible. hundred percent. I'm so glad that a man like him has a son like you that's, really winning big in this world because that's awesome, man. Well, I got to live up to him. You know, I got to, like, all I want to do is just, uh, one of two things is going to happen. Either I'm going to do awesome and he's going to be like, oh God, I can relax now and sit back. <laughs> or knowing my father, he'll get really excited and be like, oh, what's this? Let me get involved, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and that's I'll, even more scary. No, no, for me, <laughs> for me, that'd be fine, you know, because this wow. company is his baby. Wow. Right? And to see him have that energy, which will keep him young. Yeah. Right. right. And he'll be like, I love this. What have you done? So I, cool. And he's, He's got, he's a, he's a, he, even though he's over 70 years old, he's very like hip. And <laughs> I, I give, like, I'm like, Dad, you're, you're pretty trendy. You know? <laughs> like, <laughs> he's a fashion man. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> you know, and even though I'm trying to teach him about 
like marketing and social media and the internet and like SEOs and SEMs, which I'm still in the process of learning about and bringing it all together. He, he can sense that there's opportunity here. Right. Right. And he's being very Korean and conservative in the manner of like, he's not going to say anything. He's just going to sit back and watch me do it. He's like, you have the green light. You go ahead. Wow. And then he's like waiting, waiting. So then this way it's very smart. Cause if I do awesome, he's like, see, I told you. Mm. And if I don't do good, he's like, mm, I didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> like, right. Which is which is totally fine. Like, I get it. He's got yeah. a lot of wisdom, this guy. No, um, he definitely does. The the trend you said that during COVID you guys had growth. Yes. Which is just crazy because most retailers just went completely out of business, man. Yes. What was it? Was it the relationships with the supply chain? Like what how how did you guys boom in such a difficult time? Well, um, one of the more important things would be and my father, he like he talks about how these other businesses, they borrow when they make their buys, right? My father's against this. He's like, oh, you crooks, you're borrowing someone else's money, that's not right. Pay, pay yourself, do it yourself, cover it, right? And, you know, just be savvy about how he wants the inventory to be and how every, every company operates in like a different like model, right? For example, like Zara. Zara, huge company, uh, Mr. Ortega is in charge of that, and he's pretty amazing. And he knows he's been doing this for years. And it takes Zara, like, on average, like, two weeks from drawing to floor, mm. which is super fast. It's ridiculous. All they do is focus on R&D, trend, they push it, and they, and they pop it out. Wow. Right? As opposed to, like, Uniqlo, which takes them, like, a year. But they own the entire process. They own that mill. They own that cotton field. Like, they, like that ship's my ship. Right? These guys are, like, it's a completely different model, and it's a completely different kind of business style. And their products are different, but that's how they operate. And then that means you have to kind of foresee what trends will sell. You'll notice Uniqlo is more. Ahead. Yeah, of course. Uniqlo sells more basics. Right? They don't. They don't take those risks. Right. Right. Some graphic stuff here and there, but very safe, decently fashionable clothing that will not go out of style. Right. Right. Whereas Zara is like we're pushing the envelope. We're ahead of everybody with fabrication and color. Right. Right. They're just they're purely a fashion brand. But with that speed comes cost, comes price, and sometimes at the detriment of quality. And our company, we do it kind of the old-fashioned way, which I think is smart, because now I'll learn about it. Like, we, we travel to different countries, like mostly, like, Europe, because Europe's kind of ahead of America in regards to men's fashion. And we'll look at the colors, we'll look at the fabrications, we'll get ideas, and we'll, we'll have our own designers come up with ideas based on this data, mm. right? Which I guess I guess a lot of people don't want to do anymore because it's a lot of traveling. It's a lot of footwork. It's hard. You know, taking the red eye. It's like you'll do three countries in like five days. Like that's not fun. But you get the information and that can put you ahead. Sometimes like our company is more of a fashion brand. So we have been ahead in certain like designs. I was like, wow, like we won. This is cool. How come no one knows who we are though? <laughs> like this, right. is, uh. this is not okay. So that's, that's where I step in. So I just told them the marketing is, is it's mandatory. Right. Like the company is 30 years old. Only the locals of each exact store location know who we are. And as much as I love them for their loyalty and their, and their faith in keeping us up and going, there's other people who can benefit from this. Mm. Right? And the website, we relaunched it, I'd say, like only three weeks ago on Shopify. And I got the Instagram and the TikTok and I got Pinterest and I got Facebook up for the older crowd. That's I guess that would be me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's moving. Like it's moving. So it's not bad. But I think the SEOs and the SEMs are what's necessary. And that's what's gonna tie it all together. Talk, talk to me. Every successful business leaves leaves clues, right? And and being around your dad, he's been doing this for 30, 40 years, right? And and quite clearly is a success. What are, and, and you've been around them your whole life, obviously. What are some of the fundamental, I guess, business values, core values that he's implemented throughout the organization that's, that have proven successful over time? My father is all about trust. Right? He'll take his time. And he's slow to anger. He's definitely, like, he's got a calming energy about him, but there's a charisma. So there's, there's, there's a power in him. Mm. You can see it when he walks into a room, whether he's smiling, whether he's pissed, it's there. Mm. And he's the he's the kind of guy where when you see him, you just wanna you wanna make him proud. You want him to like you. Mm. 
and he motivates this and he instills this, right? Our company is mid-sized. So there are certain things that skilled employees can attain elsewhere. Why, why work here? Right? And they, they see this in him and they see what he's built from scratch. I mean, he used to be a VP of like a wholesale company and they're like, you're nuts to quit. You're nuts to start over. You'll fail. He's like, no, I won't. I have a dream. I see it. I'll get it. And he's come this far and I want to, I want to like put the cap on it. I'm like, All right, look, here's the social media here. Let's go national. Your, your products are good enough. They will compete. They will win. Like I'm thinking as the economy is being crazy, right? Zara and H&M, they're not cheap anymore, you know? And our clothes, I think, in my personal opinion, our quality is better. Mm-hmm. And it costs, it's much more affordable. Yeah. Right? I, we sell $100 jeans for 30 bucks. Who does this? And it's all because that sense of fairness in him. He's like, you know, we could mark it up. We could make more. But it's not right. And why would we do that? Right? If, I, if I pay this, then I'll charge this. That's fair. Wow. And he sticks to that. Wow. So like he has all my respect and more. And the workers the workers respect him too. They want to make him proud. You can see it in their faces when they see him walk by. Oh I'm here. Such <laughs> a name is here. The <laughs> boss is here. Like, we gotta do this. And like Word. Yeah, it's not like where my old boss is like, Oh if he's here. Right. You know, like it's different. Yeah. So mm. I love that, man. I love that. I'm sure you've had an insane transition, right, from just learning operations figuring out and re- re-implementing marketing, creating long-term strategies, right? Um, traveling and meeting all different types of people in different countries, shadowing different, you know, department yeah. heads. I mean, tell me tell me about what that transition looked like. And and I guess now that you, you're, you're in and have completed transition, what you wish would have been different? Oh, wow. Mm, you know, I wish, probably the only thing I would wish would be, I wish I'd started this sooner. You know, because when I go with like the head buyer and the head designer and we go to like Amsterdam, for example, which is like men's fashion capital and you see what they've got. I'm at the beginning. I was like, I have no idea what I'm looking for. How do I, how do I sell clothes? How do I know what's going to sell? I can't just pick out what I like. I have to think about what our customers would like and what's this fabric. What's I can't tell this. What is this? I have no idea. Right. And the buyer would pick it up. He's like, see Dan, this is interlock. This is a different kind of weave. I'm looking at it like, I have no idea what you're saying. I have to Google this. <laughs> and then the head designer would explain the techniques for the dyeing of the jeans and the denim and the cut. Look at this cut. This is designed for this. This is designed for that. This is this particular look. And it was like a gross overload of information. Mm. And two years later, now I'm much more confident. But still, there's just this is like a wealth of knowledge that they've been doing this for, for 30 years. So I will always, always rely on their suggestions, their mm. experience. But it's nice to know that I can pick stuff up and be like, I think this is good. And they're like, I agree. I'm like, yay. I got, <laughs> it. <laughs> I got it. Like, okay. So this is like the proper like French Terry brush finish, right? And he's like, it is. Oh, good. You're doing your homework. Like, of course. <laughs> so. so like, I, I'm, I guess I'm asking because one of my best friends, he just put out an Instagram reel. And he's a young man. He's 29 years old. He runs a successful business, and he just had a baby. Wow. Right? And he's, like, holding his baby in this video and saying, I really hope Maverick takes over the business. What kind of wisdom, what kind of plan would you give? How would you tran- give him a transition plan for his child when the time comes? That's tricky. You know, I have two daughters myself, and I think it's going to be a clash between the current modern norm of how people are raised as opposed to traditional the problem with the modern view is they view tradition as oh it's old they don't think about how it came to be or why it's there right when i was 30 and married with this career and the first baby i was thinking like something was missing right i'm doing the best i can i'm headed in the right direction but there's like a there's like a like a gap somewhere Mm. and now with my father saying, I need you, you're going to lead this family, and you're going to protect all these employees and make sure that they have families. There's, there's a certain like, weight to it, and there's a certain purpose. Right. Right? There's more to you in your life than just you in your little circle. 
right? Like that's very selfish and narrow minded. Yeah. It's like the longevity and the legacy is there. And I didn't really understand it until very recently. And it makes the way I view my father, it changes everything. And I was like, wow, you, you've been thinking about this the whole time? He's like, yeah, come on, boy. <laughs> <laughs> like, grow up. <laughs> Let's you go, man. baby. And yeah. I'm like, oh, jeez. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm still learning, Dad. You know, and it's very humbling that he has this kind of drive and this discipline and this this long term view. I mean, he comes from a huge family. He's got these like six siblings, right? And he's the youngest son, and somehow he's led this success, right? And he's kept an eye on them all. He's protected them. It's amazing. Yeah, and the like at first I was like, man, and when I was a kid, I was like, isn't that a hassle? Like, he's always coming to you, and <sighs> now he sees it as like this this amazing gift that he has the ability to, to give to them. Right? He doesn't feel bad about it at all. Like that love that it's drives It's a privilege. Him. Yeah, it's a privilege. Right. He's like, I have this gift. God help me out and I can do this. Yes. He's like, I'm he's like, I'm a businessman. It's the best kind of person to be. Yeah. It's like even the president has someone telling him what to do, not me. Right. Like, That's true. You know, <laughs> like it's very true. And he has the ability to build whatever depending on like, you know, like the work of his own, the quality of his own work. That's, yeah. that's the secret, man. The secret is when you're raising kids and you want them to take over your business or you want them to not be spoiled brats or you want them to not be um, like just throwing the family business to shams. The, the secret is you yourself need to just be a good man. I think that's the best example. I think, I think beyond that, right, the secret is actually not making it about yourself, yeah, right? No, exactly. I, I've noticed in my own life, um, the moment I take the, the focus off like me making money or me being successful and it's like, how can I make sure that my employees succeed or my future family is set up, right? Yes. That's when I see success. And, and the same is true. Um, I had a friend come to me and they're like, dude, I got to speak in front of like 100 people. What do I do? And the minute you take it off yourself, like, well, how can I provide the most value to these 100 people, right? How can I make sure that they have the best experience that they possibly can? The anxiety is gone, right? You're no longer feeling, oh, my God, what are they thinking about me? You're like, how do I provide the most value, right? And I think that that actually is a secret. How can I give mm. – how can I set my your family up? And that sounds like – or your, your employees, right? I have an obligation to my employees. And it sounds like that was the focus for your, your – or his vendors, right? His vendors, his partners, everybody he did business with. You just focus on doing the right thing by them. Right. Yeah, always. That's that's always been like certain details that he focuses on. He focuses on, on value of time, on, on what you're making, being proud of it, right? My father tells me, like, every penny is valuable. Mm. Like, you put in time and effort to make that. Don't just throw it away. Like, think about what it took. And, and you have to value this. And this is, like, your journey. Right. right? He's still very humble, despite all the success that is a, that he's amounted to. Right? The way he treats people, no one is beneath him. Mm. Right, he's like, his attention is there. Speak, like he'll hear you. Right, and this is something that I think is very amazing, and I think it's missing in the world, like where people need to treat each other in this manner. Mm. Right, I love that man. I love you're, that. You're you're faced with a, a tough challenge, which is taking the old school way of doing business. Right, which which is proven successful, and and, and probably lost in a lot of ways and applying the new school way of doing business and merging the two. Yes. And, and I imagine that's kind of what you struggle with consistently. It's tricky to try to explain certain things to people that don't quite get it. If I, if I say, hey, do you know what a viral video is? They're like, no. Like, okay, see, that's that's a small problem. Right, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is what's driving the market now. People don't sit in front of the TV anymore. Yeah. It's different. There's streaming services. There's their phones. There's social media. That's... Someone, one of the regional managers was complaining, we don't have young customers anymore. Where are they? And I told them, they're not on the street. Mm. They're on their phones. Right. Like You have to reach them there. Yeah. And social media, from what I've learned, takes anywhere from six months to a year to really build like a proper following. Right. And, I'm, and I'm pushing it as hard as I can because I think as the transition continues, as the years to come, like that online presence is it's mandatory. You need it. Absolutely. It's vital. Absolutely. What are some, I mean, operating 20 stores across the East Coast is, is no small feat. No. What are some challenges that you faced in managing and, and expanding this business? <sighs> Let's see. The first 
challenge is I'm the owner's son. So everyone's watching me. Mm. Right? Every little mistake I make, every decision I make, everything I say, it can be analyzed. It's, it's, that's just like the nature of the beast. No one's looking to be malicious. It's just you're on stage. So everyone's looking at you. And it's tricky when retail, everyone in retail, I think, has taken a hit. It's a tough time. And every store has its own unique situation. For example, maybe the electrical doesn't work in this one. This other store is flooding for some reason. I had one store where the sign collapsed. Because, you know, New York buildings, they're old. Yeah. And like, so that's like a unique problem. It's like, all right, well, well I call FD. <laughs> and then I got to get garb. I got to get, like, disposal. And then I, have, I need to call, like, the city to bring out inspectors. You have to okay new designs. I have to call the landlord who doesn't want to see my face. Like, I understand. He's like, oh, you want more money? He's like, no, no, let's just, like, figure this out. <laughs> like, this, I make money, you make money, okay? Like, this is how it's going to work. Right. You know, one one store is next to, like, a, a fish market, so it attracts rats. I'm like, oh, my God, what is this? Right, right. Like, keeping them out. Like, construction, like, employees, sometimes they, they, th some of the younger generation, they don't understand the value of what we have. And it's not their fault, not at all. And I try to explain it to them. Like, listen, you're a part of something very, very cool. And you get to dictate your level of involvement. You sell an amazing product. I'll tell you about the fabrics. I'll tell you about the guy who sold them to us. Like, people want to feel good about their purchase. Mm. And in this store, they have every right to. They have every right to. They're, they're, it's a steal what they're getting. Right. And you need, to sh you need to show that to them. We're not here just to, you know, just to put on a song and dance and, and like swindle these people. Right. No. They're, and, the, and the customers, they're so important. Without them, there's no, no there's no show, right? So I try to explain to them like how important sales are, how important it is to treat the people, like anyone, right? I have this weird homeless lady come in. I'm like, hi, how are you? Is there anything you're looking for? And she looks at me and she's like, oh, you're going to treat me like a human? I'm like, you bet I am. It's like, you know, come on, let's go. Let's see what you can, let's see what, what, you, what I can do to help you. Right. Why not? You know, all these relationships are really important. And at least maybe she doesn't buy anything. So what? She'll go outside. She'll be like, you know what? That store, they're cool. Those are good people. And that's what I want to push. Mm. I love that, man. I love that. There's a there's a lot going on in your store. I mean, from from prior conversations, I know that you're vertically integrated. Um, you guys handle design, manufacturing, and retailing in house. Yes. I mean, it it sounds like a logistical nightmare. How do you handle every every step of the of the process? Probably uh, there's a lot of shouting and. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, well, you know, everyone. It's this. I think this is the most intricate part of this of, of, of any kind of business, right? Mm. Is managing the people, right? Every employee from top to bottom has their own perspective on what's going on and what their particular skill set is, right? If you're the buyer or you're head of production or you're doing like logistics and data, what you're doing is the most important thing to themselves naturally. Mm -hmm. And being above, you kind of have to try to like manage this. Like, okay, listen, you're all important. Everything is vital here. So let's just try to work together. Let's keep the personal feelings out of it. Let's be careful with the tone. Like, I think one of the tricky things in the NYPD that I've noticed, which is probably any like office setting, there's always some people who communicate in a way where other people don't quite get it. And mm. they can come off wrong. Yeah. Right? And I'm like, no, they don't hate you. <laughs> like, that's not what this is. You know, and let's just, like, I'm trying to, like me, I like to empathize with everybody. I want to hear everyone's story. I want to hear what their concerns are. You can't just listen to one person, right? And you got to just watch, and people will always show you who they are and what they can do. So just give them that opportunity, and you'll just like hand. I think it's best to always handle each situation on a case by case basis. Yeah. Like it's tiring, but it's fair. It sounds like you're the kind of guy that treats the janitor the same way that you treat the CEO. Of course. When I see the janitor, I tell them thank you. Full, it's amazing. <laughs> How's your family? Like everyone's doing good. That's all that matters. I love that, brother. I love that. Um, Dan, what's the future look like for Zios? You know, what's interesting is as I've started the social media and the internet business, people, the new people who are seeing us now are new customers. They view us as like a startup. Mm. Like, oh, I've never heard of you guys. Yeah, this is a great product. What do you mean you have twenty plus stores? That's crazy. So, actually, it's, it's very exciting. I'm trying to push it fast because I'm afraid of what the economy is going to do. But, and then there's two wars going on and it's affecting everything, right? Yeah. But I think 
I think it's, it's an exciting time. There's so much opportunity here. If the internet business does what I expect it to, it, it changes it changes everything. How the clothes will fit, who who will be our target audience, the order quantities, everything will change from there, right? And then the expansion. I expect this this internet aspect to to knock it out over the park compared to all the other brick and mortar stores. Mm. You know, I don't know how long it'll take. Sooner is always better than later, of right. course. But I know the potential is there. Like, look at Fashion Nova. They're worth $500 million. Right. They have three stores <laughs> like that they just recently made. And everyone knows Fashion Nova and what they're creating. And it's like, okay, this is an outfit that you're going to wear one time. You're going to spend this much on it. But if you need it in a pinch, it's there. And I'm thinking, we make stuff so much better. You can wash it. It won't shrink. It'll, like, last. And the quality and the workmanship is there. How can we not succeed? Yeah. It seems impossible to me. Just have to keep pushing, be smart. Like that's how I view it. Like the sky's the limit. You gotta get the 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 VP of marketing over at Fashion Nova. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Grab them real quick. Oh, <laughs> their their marketing is fantastic. It Those is. guys are geniuses. Yeah, I was yeah. like, wow. Like truly impressive. That's a po that's a power poach move. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, it's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> so I'm like, hey, you want a job? <laughs> like, I'll reach over there. It takes it what what's the what's the story with um Apple CEO? I'm blanking right now. Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs. How long did it take him to recruit his his executives? Like two years. He, he would like go after like the best in the business and and recruit them for like two years on average. That's smart. Yeah, I know. I think definitely one thing I believe as being in a supervisory role is look for people who know more than you and then get them. Exactly. Don't, don't be humble and be I'm the one who's in charge. <laughs> right. No, we, we already know this. We, we like, it's okay. We don't know shit about shit. No. Right. Exactly. We just need just to know somebody who knows shit about Absolutely. shit. Absolutely. Right. If you're smarter than me, you know more about this than I need you. Exactly. That's it. Exactly. I think you guys have a great story. It really is. Thank you. Honestly, and if you could figure out a way to distribute that through social media, through the, your website, through everything, you know, Old school way of doing business, quality, right? Like, that's not something you see. These pants, I think I bought off Instagram. Yeah. They're pieces of shit, but I bought them off Instagram, right? So I think if you could see that market, but also deliver a quali quality product, that's going to keep people coming back and back and back. Yeah. I, I, I think the sky's the limit for you guys, really. Thank you. That's, I, think, yeah. I think we can do it, too. It's, it's so, it's, it's like it's a breath of fresh air to see how much... You believe in your product. Really? I was just doing a sales training this morning. So all the sales guys, I said, look, if you believe in what you're offering so much, right, the sale becomes really, really easy, man. Yeah. Eric, you told us in like the last two pods, I think like a couple pods ago, if you could go back to your, back to like 2000 and go to your, the old version of yourself, but your old version does not know who you are. How? convicted will you be to say, bro, buy Bitcoin, buy it right now, everything you got, double down, right? And I bet your ass you would convince old you to buy a ton of Bitcoin. I know what I would say to my old self. <laughs> <laughs> Idiots. <laughs> like, stop trying to play hero. No one cares. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> right. But you are, that you are convicted and you're, you believe in the product, which I think is super refreshing because a lot of people, you know, in the business world, maybe they're selling something they don't believe in and, you know, you could do that with marketing and sales, but it's so much easier if you believe in the product or you have a quality product. Yeah, it, it does make the whole process much smoother, much easier. It's amazing when when we have sourcing come by, maybe a new sourcing guy wants to see what we've got. We show him samples. He's like, this is what you sell? Mm -hmm. That's insane. Mm -hmm. right? Why don't you charge more? <laughs> yeah, right. I think there's a, we have this like PU, like bomber jacket, 60 bucks. And I brought it to this one sourcing guy. Hey man, can you uh, can you make this? I was like, wow, there's a lot of like bells and whistles on this. This is probably like eighty bucks to make. Wow, like eighty bucks, dude! I sell for sixty. Yeah. He's like, how? Right? Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean how? You're supposed to tell me. You're yeah. Like, wow. wow. And it, it happens, and it's like the hunt that the buyers. What my father has done. Like I remember when I was a kid, he was traveling all the time. I had no idea what he was doing, but now seeing it. And building these relationships and saying, listen, I know what you can do, and you know what I can do. Mm. And like that, like it's amazing because we don't have the buying power that some of these huge brands have, but they prefer us because they're like, I trust this guy. He'll always be there. How do you, how do you deal with the, the um, 
like the the consumer mentality, right? That that price equals quality, right? Because I think uh, at least I can speak for myself. If I go to the the grocery store and I see one of the the items is more expensive than all the others, like that one's probably the best. Yeah, you assume so, and naturally, of course. Right. So what I've been trying to do is is train the employees to just know more about the company because most people when they work for a company and they're just like and they're younger and this is like a transitional job they don't care mm-hmm. right they don't underst- they don't they don't do the research as to what they're where they're working and what it's all about and then what they need is to see someone who's driven and motivated by it and i tell them listen if you want to be the salesperson to the cashier to the manager to the regional manager to a buyer who comes with me to amsterdam or via bangladesh egypt that can be you if you want it right but understand what's here so when i talk to the customers they'll say hey they're holding something and like you know what that is and I'm like no like that denim is made in in pakistan we gave this guy the contract he provided us like a quality product i'll show it to him see this is woven this is knit like feel the stretch here like look at the color and then they can tell wow this guy like he's like deep hardcore into this I'm like yes i am our my name is behind this and i'm going to show you why try it on you know whether it's your style or not understand but the quality is there take a look and then the customers they they they, they want to they want to speak also and they want you they want to be heard but they want to be informed of what, what they're, they're they're there for mm. and then lo and behold the sales are up and people are like i like this store Who, who's in charge of this this person who are you I'm like oh I'm, I'm the owner's son i'm the vp and they're like wow and you're like making sales on the floor i'm like well yeah okay like what are you talking about of course love that man i guess i guess putting my VP hat on if I was you the struggle would be that makes sense in a retail store right yes. and you can inform your customer mm-hmm. and then you teach them about the quality and then they buy your product and then they love it and they keep coming back how do you do that on social media where TikToks are people two seconds next how do you inform your customer that this is a quality product for a cheap price I, I, uh, that would be uh, I would have a hard time with that. My plan would be like as we just got started. So my plan would definitely be next to make some kind of like about video. Mm. You'll see like quick flashes of the office. My father will say a few words, and and then I'll just bring it all together and explain to them that this is not like because I'm, I'm afraid. I was afraid at first. Like, what if people think we're like a Timu or a Shein? Like, what if they think we're just making some cheap product? Right. Because mm. based on price. Right. right. And we're going to need probably to give out samples and maybe like some micro influencers, give their honest two cents. We're going to have to get reviews. Like this is why we need to expand and reach as many people as possible. Yeah. But I think when people say, hey, it's a family owned vertical company, how many of those are around anymore? Like no, one, no one trusts big corporate at this point. And if they see people actually care about their product and they've been working hard at it and these old relationships are still there, I think they'll give it a try. You know, it's gr- you know it's, that's a great idea. The videos, I think, Captivating videos always do a great job. Um, there's this one website called Cadre. It's a real estate um, crowdfunding platform where accredited investors invest in these these investment deals. They blew up. They like over a very short period of time. I think they they have a couple billion under management. Um, and what they do that I just absolutely love is that each video has no each investment offering has a video and it has their executive team it has their ceo it has their chief investment officer giving a little background on why this is such a great deal and it's short sweet to the punch three to five minutes and when you leave that video you're like whoa this is a this sounds like a great investment opportunity um but dan i want to I want to wrap this up with, I guess, for the audience, the aspiring entrepreneurs, the people that are interested in the fashion industry and want to get their own businesses, or even just me, just regular operators that want to grow their businesses to to a company like yours. Um, What kind of advice would you give us? You're definitely going to come across adversity and people who doubt you. But if you have something in mind, right, like whether it's, investment and you've done the research and you believe in it or it's a product that you've made or you've a product that you've found and you know there's potential there you have to be tenacious 
you just you can't give up and you can't be disheartened by like trials and tribulations this is this is a big new shift for me am i going to mess up i'm sure i am i've been pretty lucky so far but it's coming you've messed up yeah well nothing <laughs> big yet. i've been i've been very careful yes cuz honestly in my situation i'm very i'm very fortunate as as far as i'm concerned like let's say the internet business kills it right which i'm sure it will and it changes the company it transforms and it becomes like 10 times the size that it was as far as i'm concerned 90% of the hard work has been done already yep. right you guys have already done this I don't really deserve the credit. I'm not looking for the credit. I just want to make everyone succeed. You know, you make money, I make money, we make money. Great. Everyone nice. has a good family. Everyone has good food. <laughs> you have a nice car. I love that. Beautiful. That's what I want. I would love to see my workers coming in and like like a hot car. Like, well, you just bought that? He's like, yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's very nice. No problem. That's what I want. Everyone wins. That's amazing. I love that, brother. Listen, um, from what I know about you, what I know about your family, and even the the gentleman that made the introduction, um, you guys are good people. This is a great company, and uh, we wish you nothing but the best. And, you know, God bless you, brother. Thank you so much for coming on the pod. If the people want to meet you, reach out to you, buy some inventory, what's the best way to get in touch? Oh, that would be, um, let's see, Instagram is Zeosware. That's our handle, X-I-O-S-W-E-A-R. Same for TikTok and Pinterest. And then we've got uh, the website, zeosamerica.com. And reach out there. I'm actually reading all the emails anyway. So everyone who reaches out to us, I go, I stay up all night. I answer everybody as, as best I can. Wow, that's craze. It's like, what do you think about this size? What do you think about this color? I was like, oh, I think you have great taste. It's fantastic. <laughs> like, don't worry about it. And then they're like, who are you? I was like, oh, I'm just Dan. Don't worry about that. You know, just Dan, whatever, the guy. Yeah, whatever you, whatever you need. Like, oh, you're, you're a great AI. Like, I'm not a bot. You know, like it's like, <laughs> like whatever you need. I love that. Wow, Dan, thank you so much, man. This was awesome, inspiring, and and honestly. Just that, like, refreshing conversation from coming from someone that has, you know, younger, making a transition to entrepreneurship, but keeping old school integrity.